it's showtime. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming and welcome. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. Bubble, show display names. I want to put. There we are. It's Auntie Ellen, Garden Quilt and Art Show. Thank you for coming, everybody. Learning how to negotiate around these twists and turns. Thank you, Kay Renee, the early bird. What did I see you doing? I try to watch TV and rest before I go live in the after afternoon. I'm charging my phone usually. And Kay Renee says hello to everyone in chat. Maria Graham says hello, hello. And hit that like button, family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woosa. I have been running around all day like a chicken with his head cut off, as my grandmother would say. So, I hope you guys have had a nice day. I don't see anybody else in the chat, so I will wait a few minutes until a few others get in. It usually takes a while for it to go to, for it to get over to YouTube. So they'll be in in a little bit. So I would like to thank those of you who are here for the replay. I would love to thank the wonderful mods, the moderators. I've come a long way since I started, a little over a year ago. Guess what, you guys? I have like 1,800, a little over 1,850 subscribers and of course the members and the friends and family club and we'll be handing out starting some new shout outs and other things for those of you Francesca how am I I'm a little hurt achy this afternoon once a month I take the handicap bus with one of my neighbors and we go around, round, round to a couple of little farms and pick up some things. I'm going to wait until a few more people come in. I'm, I'm so excited to show you. I actually get most of my eggs from a farmer who has a farm, but he also has an apartment in my building. And... I get eggs from him, but he sells his eggs to different markets as well. So the market my friend and I went to, uh, these are not his eggs, but they're similar. I get mixed, mixed batch ones. Some of them are from Americanas, which are blue or whatever. But these eggs, we got. I got some, my friend didn't. They say that they're 12 cage free large brown eggs that's important to me i buy eggs that are from free range chickens and they're from here in connecticut and aren't they nice i've been threatening to bake some oatmeal cookies for a long time i, I like to get out you love the rainbow eggs i i get whatever he has that are fresh that he just got that day mike is making date nut bread today Yay! I love date nut bread. I love a lot of nuts, but uh, some of the kids in the family can't eat nuts. So a lot of things I bake, I bake with a batch with nuts, a batch, a, batch, ugh, a batch without nuts. So um, let me re remember to finish thanking people. I'd like to thank the subs, the members, the first time visitors and the people in the bushes because the people in the bushes help make up the time as well. I appreciate each and every one of you. So you sell mine for $2 a dozen or free angel. Oh, I wish I could get somewhere near you. I had chickens. 
for those of you who don't know, you think Auntie Ellen's a city girl. Yes, I live in the city now. I've lived in the country. I have lived off grid. I have bought raw land and dug wells, put in septic tanks, put in, you name it, all the stuff for farms that, 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 that farmers do. I've had pigs, I've had cows, I have had Muscovy ducks, I've had all kinds of chickens. In fact, my garden was so big that the chickens were actually in the, I had two hen houses, one for the smaller chickens, like the silkies, and one for the larger chickens, like the, like the um, Buff Orpingtons, the Bard Rocks, the um, Rhode Island Reds, the Browns, all kinds, all kinds. Yes. So I thank each of you for for coming in. I know it is work time, work a work day. Dolores is here. Thank you for coming, Dolores. And I'm I'm, I'm actually sweating sweating from running around today. Oh, what else did I get? I got, you got the Issa Browns, the Leghorns. I've never had Issa Browns. I have had Leghorns and Brahmas. Those are big. I've had some chickens that were from, I think, Thailand or something. They were big, but my chickens, they were pets. I didn't have any meat chickens because I never did the thing Myself, I was always a wimp, so somebody else always did the um, did the doctor inform. I cook them. I cook anything. I remember one time, the first time I got a switch on my legs, we went to North Carolina, and I was I was about sixteen, and my grandmother told me to clean some fish. She had been to the pond and got some fish. I didn't know how to clean fish. She thought I was being smart. You're surrounded by moderators. You better be good. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. And you're always good. You're always good. So something else I got today, I got some turnips with the dirt still on them. So you can see they're fresh, 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 fresh. Hey, Dolores. Dolores is in the back, you guys. And she will be helping me. GJ. How are you doing today? Gigi is a dear friend who lives in the city that I do. And she came to see me uh, not too long ago. You're thinking of hatching more chickens, even though you you have 40? Oh, I, um, I was going to say I never had 40, but I really have. Somebody gave me when I first, when the family first got the farm in North Carolina, we, I knew nothing about chickens. They were going to make me a, a farm girl. Somebody g gave me 200 bitty chickens. Baby, I had to go get, well, I didn't have the feeders, anything. I turned, turned mason jars upside down and like little saucers until I could go to town and get the, the, get some feed and all laying mash and all the other stuff. Our treasured home. Thank you for coming, Nancy. And hola, little one. I'm just not going to say her name. I have two new stickers for my membership. Thank you, Do Dolores. You're the compost makers for the garden. Actually, my, my chickens free range. My mother said when she visited me on the homestead, I lived on the homestead until like the last 10 years. Uh, Yo Yankee sister, hola, hermana. I've been going around, Yankee sister, getting foraging food from the neighborhood, uh, fresh food, uh, fresh eggs. Maybe Yankee sister might get some eggs. One never knows, do one. <laughs> so look at these, Yankee sister. Aren't these gorgeous? I was going to make an omelet. I don't know for dinner. I don't think I ate breakfast this morning because I had to go out. I had an early, early run and taking the handicap bus takes so long. Uh, they were late getting here. Then my friend and I, but what I love is I have a little cart 
I can push things up a bit. We can do all our shopping and not do any lifting. Everybody's saying hello, Yankee sister. Hola, hola. Thank you. Thank you. So my sister said, I've been wearing my hair tied because I got it retwisted and I didn't know it looks so short. I'm not used to short my hair being short. So this is me and it grows fast. So this is what my hair is going to be to look like. I was actually upset because when she did my hair, I didn't know she was going to cut all my little curls off. I loved my hair the way that it was. And I thought that as it grew out into the locks, that the curls would still be on the end. But hair is hair. Ain't nobody got time to be worrying about no hair. I've got to get out to the garden. And I finally walked Mr. Hershey the first time six weeks after my whole knee replacement. Fresh eggs. I can't get any from Francesca. I know. I would be trying to get everything, everything that she has on her farm. You guys, Francesca has a real farm with just everything on it. Uh, Maria Graham says it looks cute. Well, thank you. I guess you're talking about this. And you guys, look, I finally took down that quilt that was up there for two months because I couldn't get it down by myself. So I got it down. Oh, Francesca said she would be love to share. I know that you would. So what that green thing is in the back is actually a green screen where when I do some more advanced programming, I can, I can, you know, do things, change them around. This quilt is called, um, mother Africa. It's a queen Africa quilt, but it's going to be giant, giant, giant. It's going to be about maybe 36 inches by 36, 40 inches by 40 inches, something like that. As you guys know, quilting is my thing. I went to my garden on the way home from walking Mr. Hershey. And guess what? I hadn't been, been down there because I couldn't get down there for the last couple of months. Some, I planted 100, over 100 cloves of garlic. And guess what? Somebody dug every stinking one of them up, stole all of it. They just ransacked my garden, my Swiss chard, my greens. I, I posted a little video about it. I, I, I hope the above ground hogs got it. I mean, the groundhogs got it, not the above ground hogs. People that go in your building, I mean, in your community garden and share. Well, I guess they felt like they needed it more than me. In fact, I, 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 I am a, I have been putting stuff away all of my life. My, that's how I was raised. You, you didn't make a menu and, oh, well, Wednesday we're having poached salmon, whatever. Daddy went out on the boat. Daddy had a boat and went fishing. If he caught blackfish, we had blackfish. If we had porgies, we had porgies. If he went to where in Stanford, Connecticut, where the fish jump over the, oh, I can't think of the name. Maybe Joanne, my sister Joanne will come in. The name of the fish, oh, the herring, because they have so many bones. And like, say, this is the herring fish. My mother would cut them across the back and fry them in hot, hot grease. And the um, in the black skillet and they would be really crunchy and you couldn't taste the, you couldn't taste the bones. So how many of you as an icebreaker, how many of you have ever had anything stolen out of your garden or taken without your permission? Put a one in the chat. Lorraine T. Hola, hermana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lorraine T is from Connecticut, you guys, and hopefully she'll be coming, coming through again. You want to hear something else I did this week? Oh, I'm just a busy, busy body. Happy Max said they've had some, 
something stolen or taken without permission. I hate a thief. I will share with you. I will feed you if you're hungry. But don't. Oh, you know what? I'm so happy. I did not walk up on them taking anything from me. PTSD time might happen. I've been working on it. But I hate a thief. Daddy used to say, there's, I'm looking at these glasses because I just got them. Just took them out the case. I'm hoping they're not scratched. Which is why I picked them up. I'm like, I paid for them a long time ago. But I wasn't able to get over to pick them up. But I think they're really cute. But they seem too strong for me. Oh, you're traveling tractor sprinkler? Oh, no. I left a little, the handle grip in the garden. Somebody took that. I had strawberries in my, in my, my, my stackable, my stackable things. Somebody took them out. Somebody stole them. This was a couple years ago when I first got the community garden. Somebody stole them. They even dug them up out of the ground. So here are my new glasses. They look too strong, though. Um, they're supposed to have blue ray blockers, some other things. I think they're cute. They're a new style. But all that money, guess what? I'm going back to my Dollar Tree glasses. Yeah, I can see better out of these. So here I be. Here I be. So, is anybody else eating out of their garden before they plow it under? Oh, that's the thing about these turnips. When I was in North Carolina on the homestead, most of my friends had huge gardens. They were farmers and used to sell, like, to the farmer's market and to the big grocery stores. And, like, spring, like, right about now, maybe before now, they take their tractors and... They would say, Miss Ellen, come over here and get get some turnips. I would go over there in my blue pickup truck. Oh, my good, my Ford F-150. I would put the turnips like in the plastic bags you get at the grocery store. And I would fill them up. They'd have each five or ten pounds of of turnips in it and I would go to, usually 10 pounds and I go to all the elderly people in the neighborhood and share with them our treasured home a happy max saying hello 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 Francesca was it a John Deere sprinkler ah uh, that that's never my dad used to say there's nothing lower than a liar or a thief and all my life I have tried to never be a liar or a thief so what the channel is about thank you dolores is she's scrolling along the bottom there are six living generations maria graham says it's raining in south carolina it's kind of drizzly today too but i didn't care i went out with my neighbor because that's what we do once a month and i got a bunch of other stuff so what i would like to talk about is my favorite sewing machine is a singer sewing machine that's what i grew up with i'm gonna pull this forward so i don't have to lift um so much what i wanted to show you is this one of the reasons i like the singer featherweight i have a featherweight it's an antique one it doesn't need a lot of electricity but I guess I forgot to bring my um, I have a small solar charger I'm trying to fill pick this up Francesca said she gets that's what she gets for a living next to a main highway so I don't know if you can see this but this is a solar charger and I have the um, Go Power Plus that Lead Farmer told a lot of us to get years ago. And I can go to the park. Uh, I can go to GG and Eco's off-grid place. 
and so I can sew anywhere. I can sew anywhere. You love a featherweight, you can stitch through the thickest denim. I actually have a couple featherweights. I actually have a Singer industrial machine as well over there that my grandmother bought in let's see she passed in the 1970s she bought it never used it and it's it's still there my mother gave it to me i just uh, got the manual for it i just wound about 50 bobbins and yeah so i'm ready to ready to go who was it let me see urban garden chronicles thank you for coming and welcome Yankee sister and Lorraine T both bought Spartans, which is an English made in England version of the featherweight, but with a much heavier motor. That thing will sew through anything. I bought a second singer. What is it? It's a heavy duty singer, just mechanical for all of these bags I've been making. Speaking of which, and uh, just a moment. Oh, but brother, somebody's knocking on the door. Can you guys hold on one minute? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your girl, Dolores. Uh, g Quat will be right back holding it down. You, If you have any questions, Definitely drop, drop it down in the chat. Let's let's put the banner up for her so I can do it. Overlay. There we go. Everyone, don't forget to join memberships. We're upgrading new stickers, new things. It's Dolores. You don't see me, but I'm here. Also, her email, if you want something made, is at the top, pinned at the top of the chat, along with her cash app, if that's how you choose. To I don't know what just happened, you guys. I muted it because I had to go to the door. Thanks for waiting. Uh, my neighbor that I told you guys about, who's a farmer, just delivered. I didn't know he was coming today when I bought some. Oh, my gosh. Well, now you can see how fresh. Let me show you this. Oh, these are so much heavier than the. Look at these are extra large. The dirt's still on them because they're that fresh. I could put these in an incubator if I wanted to. That would the, oh that's Dolores in the background talking. Thank you guys. Uh, she's she's in the back helping me. I wanted to show you guys these eggs. Uh, she's helping learn me something. These are so much heavier. Hershey, knock it off. Stop. So of course when somebody knocks on the door, Hershey wants to eat them. Oh, good thing I got up. So, here is my little charger for my machine that, so that I can take it to the park, take it anywhere. And I just showed you the solar panel that I picked out. Thank you. Thank you. So, you I got... Uh, yes. The, the night bot is working. Oh, you guys, guess what's new? You can put your, you can drop your channel now by putting hashtag, and I don't mean hashtag, exclamation mark quilt. So all of you, hello, Wellness with Frugal Mama. Thank you for coming and welcome. When I first started, when I first started, hold on one second, you guys, I'm going to mute this one minute. Okay, so I didn't knock you guys off. So hashtag, no, oh, 
hashtag on the brain, exclamation mark quilt. If you guys are not able to do look out Urban Gardening Chronicles. When I first had my channel, sometimes I would go to other channels just so that people would know I was alive. So Yankee Sister saying hello to everyone she may have missed. So Yankee Sister, check this out. You can drop your hash, your exclamation mark, and quilt, and Nightbot will highlight your channel. Okay, so you guys, let's talk about our 15 minutes. Our 15 minutes. It's 423. So today's Thursday, Saturday. I opened a package from, from Renaissance Grandma, and it had two pairs of jeans in it. And it said that they were a size 24 and a 26. They must have meant centimeters. They were made overseas because when I measured them, when I went over to debone them, they ended up being 44 by 46 inches. I'm so glad you guys can drop your channels. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's coming up. Let me see. Oh, it looks different in the notes up here than it does in uh, on YouTube. So I it took 10 minutes out of the 15 minute challenge and look, I used the bottom of those jeans while you guys were live. And I decided to make this an over-the-shoulder bag for my Renaissance grandma. So I took it. I took a pocket off of some other old jeans. And I put it on the outside. You see, I sewed it with orange thread. Put a little button on it. I used a seam to go around the button, just to show you something you can do. And I put a little cell phone pocket inside and a little reinforced bottom. And I was gonna use a commercial strap on it, but what I decided to do was, since I'm making this a cute little cross body bag, so I'm just gonna make a quick little shoulder shoulder strap to go over her pocket. Then when she goes to the market, she can put her, you're welcome, Francesca. I've been trying to, to get it to go through. Um, Yankee sister's saying that it didn't go through. So I don't know. Maybe we'll try to put it in without... Uh -huh. No, what happened was she did it twice. She thought it didn't go through, and it added her channel twice. I'm sorry? She uh she did it twice, thinking that it didn't work the first time, and it did all all the uh, links for her. Oh, so Yankee Sister, it did. Oh, there you are, Yankee Sister. There you are, my sister. Boom. Thank you, Dolores. So, you guys... This is a, a really literally a 10 minute bag. Those who were here on Saturday saw me sew right across it. It's only it was only two seams. This was the bottom of a very large pair of jeans. I cut it across about 14 inches. I made it. I cut a two inch square out of the bottom corners. And then I sewed the bottom, sewed the corners together, boom. A bag. Mona, sifting some soil. Thank you for coming and welcome. And you guys, speaking of 15-minute challenges, I want to challenge you to crochet, to knit, do whatever you want. I'm going to do a little challenge right here. My eye is watering. I have to get a tissue. So Blissful Acres Homestead. She put the word quilt. That's my, I'm a mixed media artist. I didn't become an artist until after I retired. And that's what my favorite thing is to do. 
I want to show you my 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 mail haul. My mail haul. So all this quilting and especially with the rag rugs, it's really really messy. It's really messy. So I've been using the Dollar Tree ones, but I decided to invest in one from Amazon and this one has 95 sheets. When I was doing redoing my dad's my dad's quilt, I had strings everywhere. Your laptop is glitching really bad. Oh, I don't know. I think it's something going on in the area, Yankee sister. So I bought this so that, and if you do any embroidery or you're doing stuff with, oh, what is the other thing with the cricket and whatnot, you have to remove the lint so that the new things can stick to it. The everyday life of an OCD-ish chick. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. Another thing that I bought online because I can never see them in the, in the stores in Walmart, the, the other stores. I bought 100 single edge razor blades. Why? Because when you're cutting seams apart on jeans, this makes it easy. You can also use your seam ripper, your seam ripper, but I, I bought a hundred of these. These will probably last me until I'm a hundred years old because I got tired of not being able to find one. This is something I took out. I'm giving it to Auntie Joanne. More silver that needs to be polished because that's too old to hold hot pans on. When I'm out there making cornbread every day in her skillet, Oh, I'm so glad you guys can drop your links. One of the things I, one of the things that I like about having a Singer sewing machine is that the parts are universal for most of those. For those of you who have a membership, you have two membership emojis. The memberships are the ones that pay $1.99 a month. And I'm filling them out so that you have a special something that comes up when you put your put your name in. So why am I showing you this this box? Why? Because this box is 60, yes, six zero years old. Daddy bought me for a graduation present uh, from high school. I graduated high school in 1966. Can you imagine that, y'all youngins? Y'all youngins, can you imagine? I graduated high school in 1966, and Daddy bought me a really nice sewing machine, and and my sister Joanne. He bought Mommy a, a floor model machine. Then I came home whining about taking a sewing class, finally. Yankee sister, you see all your little thingies? Oh, isn't that cute? So these were the accessories that came in that one. Some of the older machines, they could do like decorative stitches, but you had to put, and I say this because some of you might have these, this type of sewing machine, or you might see one in the, like the secondhand store. It has all these little cams that you put in the top, and each one of these cams you can do a different stitch. They weren't automatic like they are now. Yankee sister loves G Qua. I love you too. And I, this oil, you can see it's a little yellow. I would never put it in any of my new machines. This has been in there 66 years. But I wanted to show you when you go to a secondhand store, all of the accessories that are in the box will fit your new one. I happen to know for a fact that uh, Maria Graham just bought a heavy duty sewing machine. I went in this box because this walking foot is newer, but I didn't know where it was. I kind of like when I use Singer, I like using Singer parts, Singer bobbins, Singer everything. So I needed this because I'm going to be doing some stitches in the ditch and finishing some quilts. This is 
another little part that does gathering or stitching. But I wanted you to see the zipper foot. All of these pieces have been in this box 66 years. Never used. I used to make all my clothes when I was younger. You don't get these when you buy sewing machines anymore. Trust me. Maria Graham just got one. She doesn't have all these things in it. All these special little feet. So I'm showing this to show you that I see the zipper foot is missing out of here. It's probably in another pack. I have other little sewing machines. I used to <laughs> I used to have 35 sewing machines before I, mo I moved to Connecticut because I had a little shop where I made quilts and sold a lot of quilts and I had a long arm machine so I had to buy batting. I would buy batting like 100 yards at a time, 40 yards at a time and finish them. It's taken me a long time now because I'm doing it by hand. So I want to talk about the 15 minute a day challenge. Yes, Urban. 35. I actually have six in this little apartamiento ahora mismo. I have, I have six in here right now, but I, I collected antiques like family members who had machines, but I kept them up. I used to have a machine shop in, in North Carolina. I had one machine there every week. And I taught classes. So in teaching the classes, things happen. I used to actually let people use my machines. Now it's like $160 just to get a tune-up. Oh, and you know what? The machines that you get now, they don't want you to work on them. They don't want you to oil them. You call them and say, where in the manual do you service this machine? They say, oh, no, you don't have to. Just bring it in once a year. Just bring it in once a year. I'm going to work on mine, my own self. So Mona's sifting some soil is in here, and she likes to crochet. So I'm going to do a quick, quick little challenge. Here I was knitting when I'm sitting waiting on the bus or something. I, I, I knit, I make washcloths. I don't call them washcloths. I call them dishcloths. So this one is one I started. Got an extra mask. You never know when you might need one. So what I'm going to do, uh, Fr Humphrey, you guys sent my mother a. She sent my mother a whole pack, a whole pack of crochet hooks. Look at these, you guys. Any kind of machine that I have, I had a lot of machines. I had a lot of them. But you know what? I would have four or five of them out at one time because I would have different colored thread in it. I would have one that was doing like fancy decorative stitches. I would have one that was sewing straight. Of course, the long arm machine, an embroidery machine. Um, it was work. It was it was business. Malaa, thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. So this pack of crochet hooks was bought on Amazon. These are for my mom. I will see my mom this weekend. And they're all of these cushiony ones and cushiony collars. I've never had anything this fancy. Sifting some soil. You have this case. This case is my mother's. In fact, I'm going to put it next to her bag so that I don't accidentally forget it. Accidentally forget it. So this, it's gift time. It's gift giving time. Mother's Day is coming up, Father's Day, birthdays. Uh, the bottom of the screen is telling what the channel is about. For those of you on the replay or come, come later on. So this is a neck bone, neck bone cushion that I have ready to give to someone. My brother... The oldest of my two brothers, Bill, has a birthday coming up. He lives in Arizona, so I made what I thought were desert colors. See, there's lint on here from my thing. I have that roller. I can roll this off before I send it to him. This is a commission um, neck bone pillow. Somebody wanted one in jet black. 
I didn't want to make it all black. I had to see. You crochet some, but only scar. So I put this nice little, little handle on the end. Then, because there are other birthdays coming up and giveaways, here is a neck bone pillow shaped like a dog bone. Other people call them dog bones. And I always put a little handle on the end because I don't want to put it behind my, my hair because this is how I adjust, adjust mine. So those are all the things I've been working on. So I'm going to do a challenge. Can somebody push start in the, put start in the comments. I'm going to see if I can make a crocheted, a crocheted, dishcloth in in 15 minutes or how much and when I do my the 1000 giveaway I only have this hook this this one's a hundred years old uh wellness for, for frugal mama so I'm going to start I actually crochet pretty fast one two three because I've been crocheting for 70 years Okay, so I chain three, three, one, two, three. It's going to be kind of like a granny square, but it's going to be filled in because it's going to be scrubbing pots and pans and whatnot. One, two, three. So I'm going to, I'm putting double crochets in here and I'm double crocheting three and then chaining three stitches. One, two, three. Then I'm going to do a fourth one. So you guys, somebody yell at me when when 15 minutes is up and keep talking to me who else is working on something else i don't think she's in here now but bougie prepper if you guys go to her channel see that's like one would be one round of a granny square uh, she did a a what is it a black skillet contest i should say you are fast she did a a contest no, a challenge where she's cooking in her black iron skillet stuff. So she um, she made some cornbread using Auntie Ellen's old recipe. So in the corner, I'm going to do three. My mother crochets faster than me. And she knits the European way where she uses the, holds the knitting needle like a like a crochet hook. She goes, you can't do it yet. You've been knitting all those years. <laughs> nope, mom, I still can't do it. I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it the way my Grammy told me. Specific, so, so hello, Rugal mama. So, so one row is done. And I only usually do these about, about five rows. And it does, the size depends on on uh, the size needle that you use. One, two. So I'm doing this to show you that you really can make something in 15 minutes on your lunch break, in your break room for those of you who are still working. These, I give, I'll give a lot of these to my doctors for Christmas presents. And you know what? This is 100% cotton. You cannot buy these in a store. You can only get them if somebody makes them. So you better make friends with Mona sifting some soil. Fr Humphrey, I bring it every day. Those who crochet a lot and make friends with them. Francesca, you can make this. Um, it's easier than a scarf because it's only five rows. 
So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to get me some of them fancy crochet hooks like Mommy and Mona have. Oh, yes, I am. But I'm used to holding this one. And the other one, I was actually awkward holding it. Probably because I've been doing... See how it's turning into a square already? Everybody's saying hi to Dolores. Two. Three. Okay, so now I've got to put a corner over here. But you just get used to it. My mother can do it without, without looking at it, mostly. I look at it just to see if I missed any if I missed any stitches. And this is like like a granny square. It's easy so that you don't really have to count when you get used to doing it. So see? That's row 2 already. 10 minutes left. My hands are tired. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing no 10 more minutes. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> you still have to look at it too, uh, Mona. But I just want you guys to see how I make this. So when I get to five rows, I'll do it while somebody's live. Oh, you guys, Miss Shirley um, OG goes live tonight. Vision Preparedness usually goes live. What's today? Th yeah, today's Thursday. Goes live. Uh, Grow Big TV glows live. I said 15 minutes. Look, you tell my arthritis that. <laughs> this is why I don't crochet a lot. Okay, my nose is growing. My nose is growing. Well, okay. You all send me some fancy soft needles. Let me see if I can make 15 minutes with soft needles. Look at this little hard thing I'm doing. Look, I did two rows in five minutes. What you want out of my life? <laughs> but I am going to finish it. I'll have it finished by Saturday. That's a promise. That's a promise. And by the way, thank you, all of you who are in here. I see 19 people in here. And I don't know how many thumbs up, but I appreciate each and every one of you. Why? Because... Good friends become family, and family is everything. Nikki's laughing. Wait till y'all get, wait till y'all get three quarters of a century old. This ain't this ain't no game. This ain't no joke. Plus, I've been out all day long, shopping. Uh, isn't that wonderful, you guys? To have a neighbor that you did more than I could do. You still be trying to figure that thing out. I could sit with you, Nikki. When I get to D.C. and spend some time there, I will show you because we'll be together hanging out at the harbor and other places, other places. Oh, uh, my daughter went to one of the, 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 the chefs on TV, uh, his restaurant down at the harbor the other night. You should have seen that food. Oh, I can't wait to get down there. I used to go to the harbor a lot. And you see this little string in the middle? Those of you who crochet, you just work those in. Or those of you who are just learning to crochet, you work those in. Yeah, I I ain't crocheting no more. I No more, no more. I ain't gonna crochet no more. My hands are tired. I gotta look, I gotta get them limbered up. When I used to take Tai Chi and yoga for seniors, they would do things where you exercise your hands because your hands don't do as much when you get grandma's hands went to church on Sunday morning, grandma's hands. So how many people are so blessed that their neighbors come and knock on their door and bring them eggs that they just picked up today? Isn't that a blessing? I should make some quiche. I, but I, I like spinach quiche. Do you know how many of you know the ingredients to quiche Lorraine? Other than eggs. Marie Graham says, I am. Oh, you would love love that. So this, this cloth. And you know what? 
I make a lot of my dishcloths with white, pure white thread. You know why? Because I like to put a little bleach in my in my dishwater. Not that I wash dishes no whole lot, mind you. Some people don't do no whole lot of chores around here. But I do use a lot of bleach. And it keeps it fresh and everything. So, how many? I still have um, a few more minutes. Oh, and some of you who asked for these crocheted and embroidered things. I don't think you saw these, Mona. Um, these are, I have a list of giveaways that people contacted me that will be given out. This is an, an, a hand embroidered dishcloth, a hand embroidered dishcloth with crochet, tiny little crochet. Can you imagine these little needles, you guys? And they put an awl through it to, to make the hole to crochet it. So I am sending some more of these out to people who paid for, will pay for the postage. I think the postage is about, yeah, about $9. Because I put it in a little envelope that, oh, here's here's the wrong side, the hand, hand, hand embroidered size side and you can see the strings hanging down and the little things i used to embroider um don't worry nikki i have your money that you borrowed me that day and said i didn't have to pay you back so i'm paying for your postage to send one of these i thought they'd be cute for those of you who are cooking those of you who are showing your stuff i st i still have some of these some of these left you guys i think i had four of these because i thought they could either be used for some type of a top some type of a top or under your sewing machine this one's actually a little bit longer like a placemat but i'm going to share these with you guys you have little needles yes I have the I have these tiny little needles. My little needles are are older than you, Mona, my darling. So I still have some of these. So if any of you would like to get some of these, you can email me, and I still have some of these. Isn't this beautiful? Like to go on your table. Or you're cooking something and you're making a YouTube video. How cute would it be to have your plate sitting on top of this while you're smacking on that bowl of beans you just cooked? I'm just showing you some of the ones I have left that will be going out. This one is almost like cut lace. Look at this, you guys. So I, the last house that I left and the family sold it's like all oh, this stuff is not going to fit in my grave <laughs> in the next 25 years so i have to share i'm going to share with you guys just email me look these are cute these would have been when i was growing up on the arms of the sofa or whatever that would make a beautiful backdrop for males uh which one nikki um, which which one, Nikki? Because you sent me some postage. It's it's in it's it's still in the uh, what do you call it? The Cash App. I can mail you one of those, Nikki. I know you like red. I look. Let me see if I have one. I think I do. Oh no, this is orange. This is orange, but it's going out. It's going out. I had not even looked in that tote in wherever. Unbiased. Thank you for coming. And welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys, look at this one, how long this one is. This one, for those of you who have peacocks and chickens and whatnot. And whatnot.
this is half of it, but I still think it's cute. Look at the look at the hand embroidery in here. I had to, I have a help helper helping me, and she went in a room. I had this stuff. It was like I'm like, no, we need to we need to get my room dusted because it hasn't been been dusted good since Christmas. She came out of there. She was sneezing. Bouger likes red too. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Well, I always ruin my surprises, so I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. But these are going. So these are going out in the mail. This one I know has red on it. Dun, 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 dun. And more of that tiny little crochet. My grandmother used to do all this. You got yours, Maria Graham? Maria Graham says they're beautiful. Thank you, Maria Graham. Well, you were you were actually the first one <laughs> before I got off the phone that 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 sent my, that sent money for the postage. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not asking for anything for the um for these beautiful pieces that are handmade. I'm just giving them away. And then this this last pink one. Woosa. Woosa. So Maria Graham just got a new sewing, set up a new sewing center. So she's going to be uh, unbiased to saying hello to everybody. She will be, she will be um, showing us her, her new sewing room set up maybe on, maybe on Saturday and coming up. Would you, you need to send your money? <laughs> I got to Oh, I got a money dance coming up too soon, you guys. Unbiased, I got you. I got you. Linda Williams saying, "Hello, hi there." Oh. Okay. So, I'm going to let's see. Saturday when I deboned a pair of jeans, they were a very big pair. Would you guys like to see how I debone a regular pair or a small pair? And they had pockets in a different place. You want me to cut up a pair of jeans real quick? Everybody's saying hello to Linda Williams. Okay. It, it'll take me like five minutes. Let's go. Let's go do something. And I want to encourage all of you to do what you love and love what you do love what you do so let me stand oh i have to tell you guys after i went to one store with my friend we went to walmart because i needed to get nikki says yes okay uh, we went to walmart because i needed to pick up some medicine well i had that drive around cart she just sat on the bench and waited for me because all i was doing was getting some meds. I only crashed that thing one time. I went around the corner and went to the wall. Linda Williams, so she's been in the weeds. She wanted to say hello. Thank you. Peace, love, and blessings to all of you. To all of you. All right, you guys. Oh, I'm doing all my squats, you guys, who were doing squats. When you do it with a trainer, you have to do it in perfectly correct alignment slowly i turn i see it's raining outside over there so i'm going to put this down rachel i know that i have mail at the post office but i didn't make it there today didn't make it there today so you guys for for my Renaissance grandma, I had this out because it was going to be quick to put a handle on her bag, but she's special. I didn't want to put this webbing on there. So I cut out, you already see, I cut out a pair of jeans just like this. This was a leg on somebody's jeans that were tall and you see the orange the orange stitching in here. So these, this is the case to those new glasses, but I don't know. 
they seem too strong for me. Maybe I'm moving this over so that I can show you the table. Oh, one thing I want to show you guys, these are special scissors. They're called rack, rag, excuse me, R-A-G quilt scissors. And they're very powerful. When you see scissors with these big, strong handles and these small, small ends, it's for cutting through thick things. So this is one of the things when you go to those craft stores and they have a sale, you can't find any fabrics that are for sale. You buy things like this, this kind of equipment. So for the jeans, I will be using these handy dandy big old scissors. And I'm going to stand up and turn my machine around so that I don't accidentally cut up this pad that I have under my machine. These heavy duty machines, when they're really, really rocking, sometimes uh, they shake the table. This is a lightweight table that I'm sewing on over here. And I want to show you guys, this was a pair of jeans that I already deboned. And you see what this, this pocket, that's the pocket I put on my Renaissance grandma on her bag. You have a pair of those scissors, just an eight inch blade. Oh, well, eight inches, eight inches work. Use what you have. Use what you have. Now I want to show you guys. I have a pile of jeans that my granddaughter collected at the school she works. Now these, for those of you who saw the big pants I had last week, these are a size 24. And these are a normal length. So we're going to debone these because these are really cute. And this whole top cutting across here, across here, and then there's a way that you, I'll do it on a different, on a different uh, setting and show you guys how once you cut this, I'm just showing you how to cut the regular jeans because they have regular pockets. But I'll do this in a minute. I wanted to show you something special for those of you who have tattered jeans like this. You know what I do with this? I take a piece of that lace, like the lace, like the lace that I just showed you, the crochet, or anything. Leopard, you guys know I like animal print. I put this under here and say if I were making this bag for somebody who didn't like foo-foo stuff or for one of the guys, this is what I would put on the inside because the tattered jeans, you don't throw those away. You don't throw those away. This makes a beautiful bag. Look at this. So you would have this showing on the inside and then you open it up. But I'm going to, maybe I'll cut these up. I was going to cut the other ones up because they were little. Look at these little pair of jeans. See how long they are? I will hold these. These are a larger pair. I will cut the first ones up. Now, this is a size 24, size 27 jeans. For show, for show. I was born, my, I was born in jeans bigger than that. You love when the jeans have rip in them. It shows character. I do too. I like making my bags with those. I just haven't shown you guys any of those because... They go as soon as I, as soon as I finish them. So let's debone these right quick. So I will show you what I would be doing with these. I pull them up and I make them even like this. 
And I'm going to make these a little bit long. Why? Because I'm going to make a, t a tote out of these. So I'm going to use just a little piece of chalk. You don't have to do that. You can eyeball it. But I'm just showing you guys the right way to do it. Not saying I do it. Oh, and you know what? They have a lot of bags on YouTube, people making making bags. But they're in centimeters. Those of you who are intimidated by using centimeters, I always keep a yardstick. I always keep one of these. Oh, this came free in that pair of black scissors I just showed you. I keep this around my neck because, what, like, for example, when they make the straps for the bag, I was looking at one and it said, make it six centimeters. So guess what six centimeters is? You look on here, it says six centimeters. You turn it over, six centimeters is two and a half inches. That's what size I make a lot of things. And a lot of you guys can buy jelly rolls. What is a jelly roll? A jelly roll is two and a half inches. Hey, my Renaissance grandma, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, where is your bag? Oh my goodness. Where did I put it? I don't know where it is. You'll have to look back at the beginning of the video, my Renaissance grandma. I had it. Uh, I had it. Blissful Acres and debone these britches. So here we go. I'm using these 10 inch. These are 10 inch. And they cut like butter, baby. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Because I'm going to use, now what I like to do once I cut one leg, I like to use that as a pattern or to cut the other one. Sorry. I like to use that to cut when I cut one to cut the other one just so that they're the same size in case I decide to do something tricky with them. Now, if I were going to take this loose, I left the razor blade over there. You can use a seam ripper for this part. I have a cut on my finger. It's kind of hard to do. Or you can use those single edge razor blades like I have. And then you cut along here. Or you can use, you can use your scissors. Let me turn it this way. With this hair get my finger out of the way these scissors are so sharp they could actually cut the tip of your finger off okay so now you see this part this part doesn't fit over here so what you're going to do is cut up there and overlap it i'm not going to do it right now to make it flat to make it flat and that's how you would make a bag this one, you would do the same thing. I'm going to just cut it just to make it quicker for you guys. And pull this over. And put this over and stitch. You see this? Stitch along here. Stitch down here. And then straighten the whole well, hold on. Let me get my let me get my chalk out. So, what you would do is put this overlap it here, sew down there, right? Then you're going to this piece will be then flat, like one flat piece across here, and then 
I shouldn't cut it now, but I will, just to give you guys an idea. Okay, so now you see this would be a flat piece. Okay, we're not throwing these away. We are going to put these back together. And I'll show you what happens when you sew those scraps back together. So look at this piece. I've already stitched bunches of scraps. What is this from? When I was making, enlarging my dad's quilt. You see this? This is big enough to make a pocket. So I use all these pieces. Are there any questions? We're still be boned, still deboning. Pescatarian Gardener, thank you for coming. You need some new scissors. Everybody's going to want some sharp scissors like this. Thanks, Gigi and Lukita, for the Facebook support. Thank you. Lukita, Lukita is actually one of my cousins that lives in Pennsylvania. Okay, so now, thanks, cuz. And Gigi is a, a good friend that has helped me hang up some of these quilts around here. Okay, so this would be a small bag, a tote bag. We'll work on this uh, maybe Saturday. This one, I want to debone it so that I can show you. Now, I like to leave this seam, this outer seam, is usually thinner. So I take the inner seam and I cut along the part that's down, that's flat, because this is a very, very thick seam, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. Uh-oh. I don't want to cut my little my little patch that I'm going to put under here. Now, on uh, my Renaissance grandma's bag, this is what I made, the little part that goes over the button. What that was, was this. So guess what? I'm going to just just for giggles and kicks, I'm going to cut this side with these pinking shears. Why? Because they won't ravel. And I'm going to use this little piece that I'm cutting off. This is a strap. This could be a strap for our across the shoulder bag, actually. Uh, one of the small ones made out of a pocket. Okay, so what I'm going to do, hold on one second, you guys. I'm going to, oh, I was going to take these off so that you could see more detail. Okay, so I took that stuff in the corner off and I'm going to, and I'm going to cut the end. So look, here's another little useful piece. When I say the bone in it, we're not throwing the bones away. You see this pair inside was sewn with blue thread. But guess what? We have this, this holy part. So what are we going to do with this? We are going to put something underneath it. I want to cover the whole thing because I love by these being stretchy I'm gonna to have to pull them a little bit so let's try it
So this is what you would do to reinforce a pair of distressed jeans to make them like really, really cool. Like this little part, I would probably, I don't know. Oh, it might leave it there just for giggles and kicks. Some people like it. So let's turn this baby around. Whoa. And I'm going to turn my machine on. And just because I want to highlight, I want to highlight where I sewed around here. So that's just what I'm going to do. I already have orange thread in it. Are there any questions, you guys? I quilt. Remember, don't forget to drop your channel. You see why I need sharp scissors and sharp needles. I have really heavy duty, heavy duty needles in here. So where's the pedal? And put my pedal to the metal and away we go. I remember when I was little and I used to patch daddy's work pants, but they wouldn't have orange thread or anything. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to go around. Let me make the stitches shorter. Okay. Oh, it came unthreaded. Okay. Hold on, uno momento. Okay, you guys. I'm going to re-thread her. Oh, I see. Just a minute. Some threaded. The good news is that it's easy to see this thread. So I will just re-thread this big needle. Just a minute. All right, she's threaded. That's another thing about using big needles. They're easy to thread. So pull the bottom thread up. You always pull the bottom thread up when you're sewing. Put the strings in the back so they don't tangle up. And are there any questions? Ladies and gentlemen, Auntie Ellen will be right back. Uh, right now we have a thing for. Hey, guys. Hi. I <laughs> must have hit the button. I don't know. Okay, Renee's garden. Thank you for coming and welcome. No problemo. So I will move this orange string that broke. I was called a string. It's thread. I have a, a Q and A up, so if anybody has any questions, you all can drop it in that Q and A, and we'll pull it right on up. You guys, if you do you have any questions about what I'm doing, okay. So I'm basically just putting a patch on these tattered jeans, just so that we can put them, make them look cute, and put them in a bag or a hobo bag, a tote or something. So these are stretchy jeans. So I'm having to pull them. You know what? Maybe they didn't like this stretch sewing over the string. I'll just cut some of it. Some of it off. 
Okay, let me put it down so you guys can can see what I'm doing. Okay, let me... T hey, T-Nog. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate you. So we're taking a pair of old distressed jeans and just sewing around there. I don't know what is going on here. I do not know. I do not like green eggs and ham. Maybe it doesn't like this thread. This orange thread. So. I will put my regular thread on. This was some special. Special thread that this machine doesn't seem to like. So we'll just re-thread her with the regular thread. It was very thick, you guys. Maybe I need to change the needle. Hold on one second. So what I'm doing up here is just re-threading the machine. Taking that piece of orange string out. I was just looking to see if you could see me. And... Rethreading my needle. I used to not be able to do that one time. One time I was legally blind, and oh, that was so frustrating. I used to have these big, these big um, magnifying glasses, or I would have to ask Auntie Joanne or my granddaughter Sharita if it was a hand needle. I would ask the kids to to thread the needle before they went to school but i made it i'm not complaining god i'm just talking just talking to my friends and just telling that you brought me from a mighty long ways and i am so thankful i'm blessed i'm blessed i'm blessed so this is a finer thread let me pull the bobbin thread up you always do that with the sewing machine normally with the presser foot up i don't know it does something to the tension and i will put this little piece on all right are there any questions oh i'm by saying amen valkyrie eights hey how you doing Dolores, did my link drop? You were testing it out to see if it worked. Uh, put put it again, um, Rachel. The exclamation mark quilts. You guys keep uh, an eye out to see if unbiased LLC pops up. Okay, so this won't be with this orange thread. It didn't like it. So. I will cut these out. You guys, I love these big old scissors. Okay. My grandson's grandma said she was in the bushes. She was driving. Well, sis, when you come out, out when you finish driving, look at the beginning of the video. I mean, of this live. I always call it a video, even if it's a live. Oh, so that's what it was. It didn't like that thread. Okay. Well, that's like the kids that don't eat this food and don't eat that food. I guess this child didn't like this. So. Uh, 
I'm just stitching around it and pulling it and pulling it and pulling it. And this is all you do. Now, I was used it was it would have been easier to see the orange thread, but I'll hold this up and show it to you in just a sec. Then you can go back and forth across it, but that's enough to hold it. And then I'm going to come back up again. I'll make some more lines going across it to let you see how much it was patched. You don't have to do it this much. You can do it as much or as little as you want. Take this pin out. send it. So so now I'm going to turn the back of it up and just cut some of the extra excess off. Why? You could leave it there, but you can use this for something else that might have a hole in it and you want to show a patch. So this is the back. And this is the front. And you see, you, you can fold it over and it's ready to make another bag, another tote. So what do you guys think about that? Okay, so that's how you debone a pair of pants. There are several pieces. Here's another piece just for giggles and kicks. Might as well cut the other one up and have it ready, right? So these are very, very sharp. Very sharp. But you see how tiny these jeans are? I just want to show you one thing, how much fabric it makes. Oops, I missed. It wasn't close to the seam that way. Sorry. So I'm just going to cut this up. And this little piece, look at all this fabric. From that tiny pair, that tiny pair of 24 jeans. Okay, you guys. So, thank you for watching in American Life Sign Language. This is an I. This is an L. This is a U. Thank you for coming. Why? Because good friends become family, and family is everything. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. This means I love you. Echo Amate, mother, if you're watching. Mother dearest.